Hello everyone, welcome to Iona College's Sports Report. I'm Amanda Boyle here with Michael Ritz and John Stanko to talk about the men's MAC championship game as well as the NCAA tournament. Mike, how do you think the Canisius game went? I mean, the Canisius game was really good. I think everyone was worried about how Billy Barron was going to do. I mean, he played a great game. He had 24 points. He only had three rebounds, four assists. Um, eight of 16 shooting. You know that he was going to do that, but Momo Jones played lights out. 33 points. Nine of 19 shooting, which is pretty good the way he's been shooting up until now, but 14 for 14 from the free throw line, which has been Momo's bread and butter all season. So the Canisius game was definitely a big lift, especially for Sean Armand. He had 24 points. He was struggling the past six or seven games. So him scoring 24 points in the first game really led him to doing well for the rest of the MAC tournament. And especially with Momo having a 102 fever, he pulled an MJ, if you will. A lot of people were comparing it to that, even ESPN3 and their broadcast compared him to that. But for, big for me for that Canisius game was that Iona was able to win that game despite only shooting 27% from three-point land. They were able to establish in the paint, driving to the hoop. And that was really what was, what was hindering them during their 6 out of 7 games stretch where they were losing all those games. They were able to get to the hoop, get to the free throw line. Sean and Momo carried the team like they had the whole entire season before the rough patch came. And that's really what gave Iona momentum heading into the Niagara game. And talk about um, carrying the team. Taj Ridley and David Lowry really kept up with the Niagara game. How do you think they played? They played lights out against the Purple Eagles. They really did. Lowry finished with 20 points. Taj Ridley had 16 points. They both shot very well from the field. And it was establishing down low because you knew Niagara very talented up front, especially with Wandy Green. It was going to be a battle between Momo and Green in the entire game. But it was Ridley and Lowry who really carried the team. I mean, John said it. Taj and David Lowry was fantastic all tournament. I think it was the best they played all season, to be honest with you. Lowry at 20 and 17. When have we seen that? He's been yeah. he's averaging a double double, but he didn't put up that type of numbers in the regular season. So without them, I don't think we would have been MAC champs, to be honest with you. Momo was going to get his points. We knew that going into the tournament, but having Lowry and Ridley producing at that high of a level was great for us. And it kind of shifted more to a defensive end. Um, the Manhattan game. Trey Bowman coming off the bench um, had a huge defensive game. What did you think of that? Trey Bowman off the bench. What can you say about against Manhattan? He was really the key to the 20 points off the bench. He was absolutely phenomenal. Coach Grosso said he had swagger on the court, something he was lacking. So he finally got that back. Mm -hmm. He was attacking the hoop, knocking down some big threes, especially late in the game. He was absolutely huge. In that game, it was the lowest point total Iona led up all season long on the defensive end. They won with their defense for the first time in a very, very long time. So, I mean, it was great for that change of pace. And you know what? We won a MAC championship as the four seed, the most talented team. Finally, we were able to pull it out. And there was a lot more certainty that we were actually going to make the tournament. Seeing actually, we got the automatic bid. I think the biggest deal is we won scoring 60 points. I mean, if you told me we were going to win 60 points and Mom only scoring 14, I would have said you were crazy. But that type of a point production and to still be able to get the win, we haven't seen that all season. So it was great to see how you want to play their best basketball in MAC tournament time. We said with Trey, he was on and off. He's been streaky. As a lot of our shooters have been, he was the reason. He was the X factor, and he really pulled through. It was a great, great win for Iona. Especially Lowry in the second half, I think, was really big. Coaches and players pointed out he held down Ramel Brown in the second half and like, didn't let him affect the game. And also, he ended that game on that emphatic dunk. Remarkable. The team went nuts on the sideline. Ended up getting a technical foul because we stormed the court with .1 seconds left. But still, we won the game, and David Lowry was really big in the second half. And he was well-deserving of the All-Mac Tournament team honors, along with Trey Bowen and Momo Jones. What can you say? Uh, Mac Tournament MVP. Last Sunday, we had a selection party on campus where we found out that Diana Gales were taking on second seed Ohio State. What are your thoughts on that game? You know what? It's going to be a really tough game for Iona. It was one of the few matchups I didn't want us to get. Ohio State coming off the Big Ten championship win. They have all the momentum in the world, and they were one of the best defenses in the entire country. And Aaron Kraft versus Momo Jones is going to be a matchup to watch, really, for the entire first round of the tournament. I mean, just to be a devil's advocate, I was kind of happy we got Ohio State. They don't <laughs> score that many points, and if because they only scored I mean, 53 points in the Big Ten Championship mm -hmm. against Wisconsin. Yeah. So if they're the type of team that can't necessarily score, the scoring for their bread and butter, maybe we can have them play our type of Iona basketball, fast breaks. If we continue fast breaks and we hit our threes like we can, we, I think we have a chance. Maybe that's just me being biased. But I really was kind of happy that we're playing a Big Ten team, somebody who isn't running gun because we lose every time to a running gun team. You don't think they're a running gun team? I, think, I don't think Ohio State's a running gun team. I think Iona is, and I think that's what might help us in that matchup. It's one of those things. Lenardi said that Ohio State has the capability to run and gun, but it's not, it's not what they really want to do. But it's the fact that they have people like Aaron Kraft, who's a very good ball handler, and he's not going to turn over the ball, which I think is really going to hurt Iona because they thrive on the turnovers. Tavon Sledge was all over in the MAC championships, running over, forcing steals and turnovers. He's not going to be able to do that against Ohio State and the Buckeyes. That's going to be a real problem for Iona heading in. Well, speaking of Ohio State's Aaron Kraft, he's a, the best on-ball defensive player. Um, who do you think he'll be playing? I would put him on Momo, to be honest with you. I think Momo is our, our best player. I mean, statistically, he 
I think he needs to go to the line. If we can get Aaron Kraft in foul trouble early, which Momo can easily do, he can get people in foul trouble early because he's always going to the free throw line, um, that'd be big for us. But I think the big thing is what, what type of game are we going to play? Um, if, they, if Ohio State has them playing their game, a little bring up the ball, run something, work our defense, we might be in trouble. But if we get on them early, and I think the first five minutes of the game is going to be the most important for the game. Are we going to be up you know, 10-3, get on an early run, or are we going to be down? If we're down early, it's, it, it's going to be an issue. Also, you mentioned the first five minutes of the game really important. It's also the fact it's an away game for Iona because they're playing in Dayton, Ohio. It was, the, it was the site of heartbreak last year against BYU. Now they return to play all the, the Buckeyes basically in their home stadium. So it's going to be really tough for Iona. they got to keep the jitters in with them. And if they got they can't turn the ball over. I think they got to have less than 15 turnovers in the game, and they got to hit above 45% of their threes if they need a shot to win. So offensively. Now defensively, we've been very successful with the man-to-man -man in our press. Um, how do you think that will kind of transfer over with Ohio State? It's going to be interesting to see what – who Clues goes with in matchup wise, especially for the starting five? Do you put Sledge in there, or do the way Trey's playing, do you start him? So it's going to be interesting to see. Also, man or zone. Um, I feel like if, if we're playing man, it might be our best bet. I feel like we have better on ball defenders than if we play zone, because it's zone, they have big posts. I will say it's big posts, and they might be able to body Lowry and Ridley. And frankly, if they get in foul trouble, we'll be in trouble because we don't have any deep posts. That's very true. Depth is going to be a problem with Iona because A.J. English, bringing it back to that again, him getting hurt was really hard for this team. And now we had just winning the match championships, but if he was here in this game, it gave us a knock, another knockdown three-point shooter because if we're going to have to slow the tempo up, Sean and Trey need to hit their shots if we're playing the slow tempo. Otherwise, the Gales have no shot to win. And how do you think Ohio State is scouting us? Defend the three and limit Momo Jones, and you'll probably beat us. Have us, have us lay it in, try to... Feed our posts, and I, I think we're, we'll struggle. Because like we said, our house is big and long, and I think we've struggled against that all season, so it, it might be bad news for Iona. Get, get us in foul trouble, and I think you're, I think we're in real trouble. Because if Lowry goes out of the game and has to sit for extended minutes, I think that that's when Ohio State's going to pull away. Now, all ball biases aside, um, what do you think the outcome of the game is going to be? I mean, if I'm a betting man, I'm not going to put Iona in the next round. I mean, you have to put Ohio State there. They're the Big Ten champs. The champions are the best conference in the nation. It's to be really, I'll be ecstatic if Iona wins, but I don't see it. What do you think the score will be? If I had to put a score, it's probably going to be about 75-52. What do you think? Uh, well, the line is 13 and a half. We're underdogs. Uh, do I think we'll cover that? No. Uh, I think we're going to end up losing the game. I really hope we keep it close for the most part. I think they'll pull away near the end because I think we'll hit a couple threes, maybe keep it within 10 maybe. But by the end of the game, I think it's going to be, I'm going to say like 72 to 55, I think will be the final score. Well, regardless of the outcome, we obviously hope the best for the Gales. Tune in Friday 7.15 on CBS.